Now, uh, part A, part B, part C, this is question 20 that we solved it. And we said that if the financial institution wishes to immune the, from the effect of the interest rate risk, uh, desired level of the leverage adjusted duration gap should be close to zero. And if the financial institution is confident, uh, we said that uh, that rate will fall and then the financial institution should keep positive duration gap. That will provide the greatest benefit. If the financial institution is confident that the interest rate will go up, and that will increase the profit if the bank is in the case of the negative duration gap. Okay, this is what we concluded. And let's move to the part C. The part C, we, uh, sorry, the part D, it says, please verify your answer to part C by calculating the change in the market value of equating assuming that the relative change in all market interest rate is increased by a 30% basis, okay? So we need to put it, uh, everything into formulation. So uh, we explained it if there's change and so on. Now we need to verify our uh, answer in part C by putting uh, the relative change in the interest rate shock. And we said, if you remember that, change in F equity is uh, affected by three components, okay? These are the three components in Excel, okay, it's here. The first component is at leveraged adjusted duration gap, the asset size, and the interest rate shock or relative change in interest, okay? Now, so these three components affect the equity, the net worth or the value. So now uh, we can proceed with the just formulation, part D. We just need to substitute everything into formula. So change in equity. So what we do here, we need to put the leverage adjusted duration, which is, uh, what we found it here, it's 8.22 minus, sorry, not multi, minus, we should times by the asset size, we should time by the asset size, and our asset size is equal to 1 million, so we're gonna add it to 1 million, here you go, times him by 1 million, and times, by relative change in interest rate, or we can say it is increase in the, sorry, not increase, but uh, there is an interest rate shock. But as we said, it's in the question, it decreases by 30 basis points. So there's an interest rate shock. So multiplied by minus 0 0.003. And of course, uh, we should put a negative sign here it's always here, as you can see, the negative sign should be here. Let me read the question again. Okay. There's something I'm missing, but I'm still let me confirm it. Okay. Uh, part D, verify your answer like increasing so the change, relative change interest rate is increased. Okay, sorry, I made it decrease, but it's increased. It's increased, okay, it's increased. So it's, there's an increase in that. So we shouldn't put the minus here, which just positive change here, relative. So there's a positive interest rate shock. So that positive interest rate shock uh, will bring us Uh, change in the equity will be reduced by 24,000. Okay, let's proceed further. I'm oh, sorry, Professor, can I ask you a question? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Like um, when we calculated the D, we used uh, this formula, like change in equity, that big one. Yeah. Uh, then where is the last um, one plus R or didn't I? It's this one, the, the yeah, last yeah. part. It, mm -hmm. it is this 30% uh, change, 
okay? 30 basis point change. It directly gives you in the calculate, I calculated here. Uh, so they directly uh, gave us yeah. this part. Yeah. Okay, okay yeah. thank you. Directly, it's calculated. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And the last question, there is a good question. Okay, now, uh, we understood here, uh, the position of the bank, in this case, is not immunized. Why? Because change in the interest rate, it brings a negative change in the net worth. So we need to immunize. And last question in part E, it says that, what would be, what would the duration of the asset need to be to immunize the equity from the changes in market interest rate, okay? So this is the question. What should be the duration of the asset in order to immunize the equity duration? So by immunization, we mean making your duration gap close to zero, but mathematically in here, we will try to make it zero actually. So when you immunize your equity from changes in the interest rate, that requires the duration gap to equal to zero, okay? So let me type it so that as you immunize equity from changes from interest, interest, rate shocks as you immunize your equity from interest rate shocks that means that makes you uh, that actually so duration of assets should be equal Actually, not just duration. Duration gap of assets. Or if it's just duration gap. And the duration gap, not the assets. Sorry, guys. Should, duration gap should be equal to zero. As you immunize your equity from the rates, from the interest rate shocks, so the duration gap should be equal to zero. Then uh, we need to count, so how much we need to make it so that duration gap should be zero. As we can see, the duration gap uh, is not zero, okay? This duration gap is not zero, so we need to make something that it should be duration gap. Uh, what we're doing here, uh, we'll do the following. We'll put this formula, duration asset and duration liabilities. Okay, so duration of asset minus K times duration of liabilities, okay, we should be equal to zero. This is what we know, but what we need to do to find out how can we make the duration, it's equal to zero. So we know the duration of the liability, we know it already, and we can find the duration of asset itself, actually. So duration of liability, duration of liability times K, times K is equal to 1.8975, Nine hundred zero point nine. That would give you one point seventy seven seven five if you calculate it. Okay, this is how you get it. Then
then uh, we have duration of asset equal to sorry this is duration of asset is equal to one point eighty nine seventy five okay this is how we find so uh, what we do here basically if you with the formulation if you play around uh, is that uh, duration of asset is equal to k times duration of liabilities so we bring one part of the equation to to the right hand side and leave the duration on the left hand side in this way we are trying to get the duration calculated so that it will make the equation equal to zero that will give us the immunized position of the banking certain bank okay the certain banking industry so 1.89 yes please um and the row 36 i think in the formula should it be dl multiplied by k or it's just dl 30 uh, dl multiplied by k Okay, we already calculated this, this uh, duration liability, okay, it's given here. This is how we calculate it. And let me just uh, more clarify, okay, I need to clarify this 1.80. Yeah, I'll clarify it, how did I get it? So DL times K is equal to our duration for liability is here we go for this is T is 35 so this is the liability so 1.90 1.90 times, and the K is the liability of the asset. Nine hundred thousand. Let me just divide directly from here. Times. Why is this so? Uh, because I'm not calculating. Okay. So 900,000 divided by 1 million. Now, uh, this, if you calculate, actually this 1.90, just a second, let me check the right answer so that I can just confirm it. If we well, multiply what we get it here, this is duration of the liability divided by, okay, and then we get it, that's good. Then this is multiply this and divide it by asset, we get it. And so there is a mistyping error in, okay. That's okay. That's why I need that. When I use the calculator, that makes better. So when you calculate this part, one point times nine hundred thousand divided by one million. So the asset one million, one point seventy one of years so duration of liability so guys uh, this is is i got from the solutions but the solutions are not uh, uh, kind of approximated it's like a bit 
misleading. So I'm not going to use this solution. So 1.90, it should give us 1.711 of years. Okay, that makes sense actually. So that means uh, if you want your duration gap like this equal to zero, your duration asset should be 1.71, okay? That will make your uh, liabilities equal. So it's just simple formulation of calculation. I just, I was just lost here. So if you just compare zero equals to uh, 1.71 minus 1.90 times 900 divided by 1 million. And that would give you actually the duration gap is equal to zero. So that means uh, what kind of strategy you can use in here, guys, uh, how you should work out your uh, asset side duration. So you have to reduce the maturity of your asset to this point. So you should make it, if it's above this, you have to reduce to this. If it's lower than this, you have to increase to this point. So to make your equity to, Im to be immunized, you need to work out your asset maturity side. So this is how we work with this. I'm sorry that I just bit lost in here with the calculation because it's I, uh, I my mouse is broken and unfortunately I cannot type it well in here. I cannot use the properly this, the arrow of the mouse. And it made me to mislead here. Everything is clear until now? Now. Okay, uh, this was question 20. There is there is another big comprehensive question, uh, which is here. We're given the balance sheet in here, okay? Like a bit more com uh, comprehensive balance sheet. Cash, federal funds, loans, floating loans, fixed. And on the liability side, we have got core deposit and Fed funds as well, Euro CDs and equity. And additionally, we're given some information in here like the notes to balance sheet, the Fed funds rate is 8.5% and the floating rate is uh, the library, which is 4% and the currently library is 11%. Uh, and the fixed rate with the five year maturity are priced at the par and paid 12 annual interest rate. And the principal repaid the maturity. So core deposits are uh, fixed rate for two years at 8% paid annually. The principal is repaid at a maturity Euros currently yield at 9%. The first question, please, uh, you should calculate what is the, uh, the duration of the fixed rate loans portfolio of the Gotbacks banks, okay? Fixed rate loans, only the fixed one here. So that means if you're gonna calculate the fixed rate loan have got five year maturity and that is priced at par and pay 12% annual interest rate and the par value is here, okay? 65. So 12% is annual interest rate. And the library is 8%, sorry, 4%. So that means we need to calculate duration is the following. We need to go to Excel and this is question 21. So we have T, we'll have cash flow, we have discounted cash flow, we have T times discounted cash flow. And the T is five years. And the cash flow is who can tell me what is the cash flow if YTM is 12% or the interest rate? YTM is 12%. Coupon rate, uh, sorry, par value or the face value is 65. The bond value is 65 as well. Then what should be the coupon rate? 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. 
So that means uh, YTM and the coupon rate are the same. And that, that's why the current market value, is that loan, that fixed loan is being traded at its par value. So 65 times 0 0.12, that brings us this, 65 millions. And if you add this, plus 65, 72.8, and if you're gonna discount it, you're gonna discount with the rate of so this divided by 1.12 to the power of <clears throat> 2 the power of one, and we just drag it, and we should multiply it as we do it basically. And we're gonna sum it up. Sixty-five, as it's predicted, and duration is equal to this divided by sixty-five. So four point years. This is the duration. This is what we calculate for part A. Somebody's asking questions, sorry. Oh, okay, it's just comment on the question that I asked. And we move to the part B. If the duration of the floating rate loans, uh, so this was the part A, it's just straightforward. We, we need to calculate the duration gap. And for B, we need to calculate uh, the duration for the floating rates and the Fed funds, uh, if it's 36 years, and what is the duration of uh, gold bonds uh, assets in average? So they are given some duration. So we need to calculate with a proportional weighted average. Okay, now we need to calculate it for all assets. So uh, part B. So the duration is equal to, we need to calculate for all, and on average for all assets. That means we need to consider all of the assets that we have it. But we know that the cash, for example, is $30 times zero because the duration of the cash is zero because it's non-interest, it's not rate sensitive assets, it's directly zero. Plus uh, we have here $20 of Fed funds, which is with duration of 0 0.36 probability, okay. Uh, $20 times 20 bucks times 0 0.36. Plus, we have 105, which is floating rate, okay? But the floating rate, we will leave it to, let's see. Yeah, floating rate loans is the same, with same probability, with same duration. So 105 times 0 0.36 plus fixed rate. The fixed rate uh, loan is 65. 65 times the duration, which is here, 4.03. That would give us, that would give us the duration of assets. Duration of assets of this bank. If you do take, if you do take into consideration all the assets that we have, okay? We take the cash, cash directly zero. You may just ignore it, I just put it here. And Fed funds, 20, loans, it's 105, loans, fix is 65. So uh, if you just put it, calculate, you should get, let me put it here. So 20 times 0 0.36 plus 105 
times 0, 0.36 plus 65 times this. And this is not the end, okay? This is not the end. This is we get that we have not, uh, if you are taking the duration, then, then we need to divide by the value of the total assets as we do it in, in the normal case here, okay? This is where we get it now. We need to divide by the value of the asset. So let me put it here so that it can be done. Like this. And duration of assets is this value should be divided by total asset, which is 220. So this is what means that we have duration of assets 1.30 years, 39 years. There was a question. Professor, shouldn't we assign weight then? Yes, we already did it. As usual, the background is, is like fast in advance. Okay, now uh, this was part B. I guess part C will ask what is the duration for the liabilities. Yes, duration for the core deposit if they are priced at par. So we, we need to calculate for the core deposits, the duration. And in part D, we're gonna calculate the duration for liabilities. So core deposits are here and their price, so the core is $20. And the information about the current cur deposits are here is given. So the set funds are eight to 12 to rate is okay. And fixed rate loan has maturity in the principal repay that the core deposit are fixed rate at 8%. Okay, here. So core deposit is 8% paid annually and they are traded at par. Uh, what do you think? What is the coupon rate? If the YTM is 8% and it's being traded at its par. Now look at it. Eight, very good. So we have the core deposits and the YTM is equal to eight. Time is how many years? I need to check it. It's for two years, the core deposit is annually, but for two years, it's not semi-annually. Okay, just two years, it's even the quicker that we think. One and two, the cash flow is, which is $20 times 0 0.08 would give you the, this, and this, like $20 time plus this amount, we'll have this one and we're gonna discount it. This divided by 1.08 to the power of this, And this times the period of the years, get this. And if you sum it, twenty thirty-eight. So here we have Duration is equal to this divided by this, 1.92 years, okay. And this is what we found it, that's great. So the part C was answered and then we are asked to calculate the weighted average of the duration of the liabilities. The weighted average of the duration of the liabilities. So duration of liabilities is equal to, so we'll consider the same thing like we did consider in asset side. Here we have 
twenty dollar first is a core deposit times one point ninety two plus what else we have fifty fifty times it should be given the Fed funds. So the Fed funds floating rate, okay, the library is eleven, four percent. Okay. Oops. Professor? Yes. Maybe we use 0 0.36 in no, no, the B no. part. Uh, no, 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 we're not using B. It's, it's here, it's here. I just by mistake, just drag it down. It's in part C, it tells you how much, what is the weight we should use it. Here. So what is the duration here, here? Okay, this is the part that we are doing now, part D. If the Fed funds liability is 0 0.4, okay? It's here. Euro CDs and Fed funds are 401. Fed funds and Euro CDs, they should be weighted with 0 0.401. So 50 times 0 0.41 plus we open the bracket, then we add uh, the 130 times 0 0.41 times 0 0.41 close the bracket and close everything. And we get, to calculate everything, 20 times this duration plus 50 times 0 0.401 plus 130 times 0 0.401, okay? This is what we get it. And if you wanna calculate duration of liabilities on the weighted average, There it is. That should give us this divided by 120. So this is what we get it. Years. Okay. So this is what we are looking for actually. Okay. Our aim is to find this all. Okay, this is core deposit, and this is what we're looking for. Now let's move further. What is the uh, GBI, is the duration gap, and what is the uh, interest rate risk exposure? So we need to just clarify what will happen if there is some interest rate shocks having certain uh, duration gap. So as you can see here, A, B, C, D, E part, the duration gap is just duration of asset minus duration liabilities. So it should give you and here actually guys, uh, you're asked not just uh, you, always you should keep in mind change in net worth has got three components of this formula. Okay, you should always keep in mind. Let me just copy this formula to this side. Okay, so now we need to calculate the first. So we calculated this duration of asset, duration of liability. Now we need to calculate the adjusted, the leverage adjusted duration gap. Okay, how then at the end we'll come to this point how this interest rate shocks will affect if there's any changes. So we have in here, so adjusted or leverage adjusted, leverage uh, 
adjusted duration gap is equal to, so we do here, duration of asset is here, minus duration of liabilities is here, and times uh, key, key is representing liabilities minus assets. So what is your liability? Here we go. Who can tell me how much your reliability in here? If our asset is 220 and equity is 20, what should be your liability then? 100. It should be 200 over 220. Very true. So this is, uh, we have a duration gap, adjusted leverage duration gap, okay. Here we got it. 39 minus, okay, okay, good. So this is adjusted leverage gap. So, so who can tell me anything? Can you comment, give me uh, interpretation of it? Like uh, relate to the interest rate shocks. If there is an interest rate increase expected, what do you think what will happen to the change in net equity and change in the net worth of the bank? In here, first of all, we have positive duration gap. We have positive duration gap. So any increase in interest rate will lead to a reduction. Never forget about this negative sign in here, okay? It's always here. So if there's a positive here, that will bring to a reduction of, to a reduction in net worth of bank. This is by how much the equity will change for one percentage change. And here, if the interest rate rise, the price will go down. Uh, not the price, actually, the value of the equity, okay? The value of the equity. The value of the equity will go down. So in here, we'll, because of this negative, this is only the change on here, okay? So with the positive duration gap. Then we proceed. EF uh, duration and what is the interest rate exposure? We did it, E. Now F, what is the impact of market value? If there is a 1% increase in interest, 100 basis, okay? That uh, relative change in the interest rate is equal to zero, 0 0.01, so they directly calculated to you. So you need to calculate what will be the change in your equity value. So it's just straightforward. Change in equity, we just substitute all the formulas, minus, so adjusted duration liability, which is leverage adjusted duration gap, uh, times, the asset, which is 220 million, I put million so that we can get a clear picture, times increase in interest rate by 1%. So this will be a change in the net worth, okay? Your net worth will be reduced by 2 million if there's only 1% increase in interest rate, okay? If there is 1% increase in of interest rate shock.
Okay, let me check that situation there. So clear. Now, FG, let's move further. What is the impact of the market value of equity if the relative change in all interest rate is decreased by 0.5%, 50 basis? So the same situation, but with reduction, okay? The same situation, but with reduction. So I'll put it here. EFG. So do you expect increase or decrease? So first of all, this will change to 0 0.5, but it will be negative number here and 220. Okay. So your change in equity will be equal to 1 million 33,000. This is by how much your equity will change if there is reduction in. So that shows a change. You see by how much it changes. That shows, uh, does this bank has the sensitive, since, uh, how, like, uh, can you say that the uh, balance sheet of this bank is sensitive to changes in the interest rate? Yes. Yes, because the change in equity is huge by small changes in interest. So to reduce, if you're not confident as a financial manager, I'm asking question for you. If you are not confident as a financial manager in this institution, what should you do if the balance sheet of this bank is sensitive to changes in interest rate chart? What should you do? To reduce the duration gap, maybe? Yes, to reduce the duration gap. So can you uh, advise more specifically, what you, will you do to reduce it? Duration gap is consisting of two sides, duration asset and duration liability. So how are you gonna work out to make it zero? Yes, as you mentioned in the previous lecture, um, we need to equate the maturities of assets and liabilities. Okay, so, uh, but from which you're going to start asset or liability which you're going to use here from assets that's uh, the duration gap is positive be careful so uh, maybe we need to start to start from assets because uh, the duration gap is positive means yeah, think carefully need. so which way will bring you more easily look at the balance sheet okay first of all in order to answer this question you have to think uh, which way and will be easier for you to minimize the maturity or either of asset or liabilities this is how you should identify first of all maybe for asset side it will be a bit difficult for you to do it as a financial manager of a certain bank or if you if you compare with the liability so you need to make it but in any case uh, you have to make your duration gap at least uh, close to zero if you're not confident in uh, prediction of the changes in interest rate so let's see what the question is asking it's most probably asking to calculate the to equate the duration gap yeah what is the variable are available to what are the uh, uh, variables are available to gbi to immunize the bank and how much would each variable need to change to get duration gap equal to zero? So we said we have uh, asset and liabilities on both sides. So we can play either from the, with the asset or liability. So uh, that means, as one of our friends said, it's better to go with the asset to reduce the asset to this point, okay, to the duration of the liability side. So leverage adjusted duration is here, okay? Somehow you should make it zero. So uh, what do you do here? One point, so zero is equal to duration of asset minus duration of liabilities. 
times k. So duration of assets is equal to duration of liabilities times k. Now we can find how much of duration asset should be so that it will be equal to duration liabilities of k. Your duration average of liabilities is here and the k you can calculate is 200 or 220. So let me calculate here. This times 200 divided by 220, okay? This is how much your asset should be. Duration of asset should be in order to make duration liability equal to, so in order to make the duration gap equal to zero. So in this case, the leverage adjusted duration gap, okay? I'll cut this H. Okay, so leverage adjusted duration gap is equal to this minus this times 200 divided by 220 years. So in this way, you will immunize your duration gap. You will immunize your equity side to changes in interest rates. So any interest rate shocks will not have any effect on your side. So the effect will be zero. If you wanted to compare, if you wanted to see how it works, then it would be uh, actual change in network will be equal to zero. If, if you, as you can see here, this all the multiplication, if this adjusted duration gap adjusted leverage duration gap is equal to zero. That means multiplying by size and multiplying by relative change in the interest rate will bring effect in net worth equal to zero. Okay. Okay, the more we proceed, the more real example we are getting in. And actually you have to understand the logic and you have to be able to explain the results that you get it and to apply the certain project. So in here we have more interesting question. Okay, I will just start reading it. If you want, you can try at home to solve it. You can try at home and solve it, this question. Uh, in here it's given some information about the asset and liability side of a certain company. Uh, you're asked to calculate the true market value of the loan investment and the liability after change in the interest rate. So if there is a change in interest rate, by how much it will change in the real market, not using the duration method to calculate it. And this B part, it asks you to calculate what is the impact that these changes in market value have on the market value on the FI's equity. So using the true values, okay, we're using different uh, methodologies and these methods will be used to calculate the bond value. If you remember in the, at the beginning of the chapter eight, I. I, sh I, sh I, sh I show you, I showed you already how to calculate the bond value using the Excel. So in here you're asked to calculate the, uh, the bond value on asset and the liability side. Uh, that will show you the, the value of the certain asset or liability after the changes in interest rate. And then after you can try to compare how much it will show the effect on equity. And then we will proceed with the duration of asset and duration liabilities. And then we're going to compare the results uh, with true value of the market value and with the duration market value changes method. Then we're going to come up with a certain conclusion actually about it. So uh, I will stop here. On Monday, I will proceed with the, some questions. And on Tuesday, we're going to move to a new topic, okay? That will be more than enough from this chapter, actually. But I will advise you to go over the question that you can solve it. If you cannot solve it, it, it will be better for you to come up 
with a certain question. It may be because you, you will not be able to solve something. Any questions? Excuse me. Yes. Yes, I have one question. Yes, please. Uh, so, uh, which topics, chapters, like, will be included uh, in the first midterm? In the first assessment, actually, one more time, I'm repeating. We don't have first midterm and second midterm. We have. Yeah, uh, I, I got it. I got it. So uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. First assessment. As first assessment will include four chapters. Okay. Okay. First four, right? Yeah. First four chapters. Okay. I got it. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome, guys. If you don't have any questions, see you on Monday. Have a nice weekend. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See you. See you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.